Normal people become terrified of criminals. Shots were just fired. Police just came out and told us, and we're headed there right now. They become terrified of their own government. Conor McGregor reacts to Dublin riots after declaring Ireland is at war. For this, he is under criminal investigation. This is how crazy it is. Take a look. Conor McGregor said he does not condone the riots in Dublin, but insisted that a change must occur after a knife attack left five people injured, including three children. I like how they say, I like how they say five people. Just say three children and two adults. A five-year-old girl was left in critical condition after an attack in Dublin on Thursday, November 23rd, which led to violent protests in the Irish capital. I will add, some of the videos of looting, clearly not over immigration. It is a bunch of people just smashing and stealing stuff, and they're saying, oh, they're far right. No, those guys, that's opportunistic. Mm -hmm. we, see those, we see that happen all the time. But what we are seeing is a lot of the nationalist personalities in Europe pointing out that the the indigenous populations of these countries, the white majority and, and, and natives to these lands, are, are, are actually protesting, they're actually rioting. It's not just in Dublin. We'll get into more details in a, in a minute on France. We'll, we'll talk about that in, a, in another segment. But even in France, you had, I believe it was an Algerian immigrant mm -hmm. threatening, uh, they're here to stab white people, and then a teenager was stabbed and killed. So now you are getting people pushing back. Let me Let me add to this. I was hanging out with friends this past holiday weekend, and a friend of mine uh, introduced us to a friend who was from Holland, who is like, I would describe as a left liberal individual out of Europe, who explained that the right is winning because they're all sick of immigration. And she went on to explain in her very thick Dutch accent about there are too many people that are coming and they're, they're getting money from the government and people are really fed up. And I was like, wow. Now, this is interesting because then Geert Wilder's party wins. And this is what we're seeing. It's fascinating. This is this is crazy. Uh, eight eight years ago, you couldn't say men aren't women on Twitter. You would be banned. Now we're see we are seeing nationalist politicians winning more right sentiment. You're seeing Donald Trump winning among eighteen to thirty four year olds in more than one poll. NBC News is kind of pissed off about it, but we're seeing a lot of this now. Conor McGregor has another tweet. Let me see if I can pull this one up. He tweeted. Our current government leader recently told communities across Ireland he is actually not asking them for permission to plant multiple busloads of people in the dead of night inside their community. He is instead telling them, we, well, now it seems from below, said communities are not going to ask him if they, may stop, if they may stop them. How do we feel? I feel transparency is the answer. Full information should be attained and divulged to gain support from the communities of Ireland for this new peculiar procedure that has begun over the course of this year, 2023. Without it, fear, panic, unrest. Can't we come to our senses here? Take a look at this. It says, in County uh, Latrim, Irish men and women have set up a checkpoint to prevent asylum seekers from being planted in their town. Of course, for this, Irish police are investigating Conor McGregor over his tweets. It's getting crazy. I don't want to jump too much into it because now we've got more reports that they're passing these draconian hate speech laws to ban this stuff. I got to say, man, Ireland occupied territory. Yeah, Ireland doesn't want your memes anymore. Ireland's trying yes. to pre prevent. That's uh, that's seriously part of their new laws. I mean, one of the issues here is that this uh, is such a tragic, the optics on this are so tragic because not only was it young children, but it's young children being walked to after school care after departing an, uh, an all Irish school, meaning they only instruct in the Gaelic language. And so this is obviously to the core of Irish culture, something they feel like they would want to protect their language and their children. I mean, th even the stories coming out of it, right? I think it was, uh, I, they were saying a Brazilian bike messenger is the one who like mm -hmm. ultimately knocked this guy out with his helmet and pinned him to the ground. Well, it was interesting too, because it w it w the, there were reports that it was an Algerian immigrant. And right then away. immediately, yeah, the BBC and all of these other outlets were like, it wasn't an Algerian immigrant. He was an immigrant 20 years ago. So <laughs> he's not right. an immigrant. He, he he's a friend. That's different. And it turns out he's never had a job. Mm -hmm. You know, he's been living on the dole the whole time. Yes. And when you look at that, it's absolutely insane. And those those hate speech laws, um, one of the one of the po parts of that law, it says a hate crime is any criminal offense any criminal offense which is perceived by the victim or any other person to have been motivated by prejudice based on a person's age, disability, race, color, nationality, ethnicity, religion, sexual orientation, or gender. Mm -hmm. So it's 
any criminal offense perceived as being motivated. Which, which, which means the government decides yes. regardless. Mm-hmm. It's messed up. But now, do you think but, this guy who perpetrated this attack would be charged with a hate crime? No, of course no. not. Well, they're saying that he was mentally deranged or something because he was arrested for illegal knife possession earlier this year and let go. Well, because, knife crimes yeah, are up all over. Yes, right, yes, right. But, because but, he was like mentally a problem. Anyone who goes out and stabs children is mentally deranged. Right. <laughs> it's not an excuse for the behavior. No, it's not. Nor is it, is it a, an answer uh, uh, to the complaints and the questions of the, of the indigenous population who are concerned about an individual who was actually slated to be deported, fought it, and was able to stay. In and 2008. Then went, in 2008. And then went on to uh, stay in the country. Now, I'm not sure that in this, I, I, what, I, what I don't want to do is take an, a single anecdote and say, aha, immigration. But the issue is they have not addressed it. They have punished the people who live there and they have helped foster a very anti-immigration sentiment where all it takes is one story like this. And that's the Tinder. That's the spark for the powder keg. My wife and I were in Ireland in 2018 and uh, we were out there for a week. And like we, we spent like three or four days, I think, in Dublin. And we didn't see like I didn't see any of this. I, everybody there was Irish. So I, I guess I guess this is something that's come up in the last five years or so. I know England's got a lot of issues there. Well, there's there's they, they, they kind of settle themselves into their own little isolated boroughs and stuff. Are they doing the same thing in Ireland? But this is this is the look, I, I grew up in Chicago. You walk around Chicago, you're not getting shot at. Right. However, Ch- Chicago has more shootings than I think at one point they call it they call it Chirac because Chicago had more shooting deaths than Iraq did. But any tourist who goes there is like, I don't see anything like this. Yeah. The but the question uh, is, are you in the neighborhoods? Right. Are you are and have you have you witnessed the changes? So when I went to Sweden several years ago, they they saw something like a one thousand three hundred percent increase in murders. Now, to someone who doesn't know anything, that sounds terrifying. Like one thousand three hundred percent. Yeah, it's because they went from one oh. murder the year before to thirteen murders, mm-hmm. and so it the, the number is shocking. If you're from the United States, you're imagining Baltimore when someone's like the crimes through the roof, the murders are up a thousand percent. You're like, whoa! You're imagining crime in the United States, which is it can be bad. If you're from the United States and you go to Sweden, you're like, wait, your town of three hundred fifty thousand had only thirteen murders? Wow! I mean, that's bad, but like. <laughs> <laughs> come to the United States. Yeah, the percentages seem skewed. But for the people who live there, that's a lot. Mm-hmm. They don't have murder, mm-hmm. and not only that, they're having grenade attacks. They had, they had. Uh, I think they they have the record for grenade attacks in a single year in Sweden. Yeah, and it's because people who don't who aren't from there are coming in, and they're bringing. Uh, uh, I believe it was from like. Um, what war was it? There was, a, I, it's been a song since I covered this. There were leftover weapons used in war and the gangs got easy access to them and started using them against each other. So there was like a, an eight year old British tourist, I think was, was, was killed in a grenade attack or something like that around the time I, I had showed up, had shown up. So the point is, if you live, if, if your country is a sleepy, peaceful country with no murder and they open their doors to immigration, murder skyrockets, people are going to protest. And the, the the media manipulation and the lies from government officials, I mean, it's it's it, it, it only lasts so long. The the censorship, the manipulation, social media censorship, it's only so long until people just snap and say no way. And I think especially with Ireland, the UK's uh the way the UK treated their asylum seekers ultimately creeps in even if they potentially didn't want it. So five years ago maybe they fought it harder. But Northern Ireland, which is obviously in the same physical land as Ireland, uh, even though it's part of the UK, the number one baby name in Galway was Muhammad in 2022. Right. Wow. And so we, people were right. shocked by that. People were completely shocked. But it, they were it's, like, oh, it's Liam. Nope. No, <laughs> it's in fact, Liam. not. Jack. Well, the Patrick? average size of their Richard. family is significantly bigger than anybody in Europe. I mean, right. like, which is crazy when you consider the Irish Catholics like they had big, big families. But well, now it's down anymore. to like one point. Yeah. I think I think Europe like averages like one point five children per family, and like I think anything less than one point seven, it's and the unsustainable. Point, ultimately, immigration anything, issues anything with immigration. Less than two. Is it two? <laughs> well, if two people only make that's, one kid, that's a good point. <laughs> there you go. I think the thing is, ultimately, immigration issues are a long-term negative investment, right? Like opening your doors to some immigration, a lot of the countries start with like, oh, well, we're we're a sleepy town. We can offer stuff. We're wealthy. And then ultimately, they don't see the investment or they don't see the implications of what they are investing in long-term, which is that bringing someone into your country because you believe they're seeking asylum might be an honorable thing to do. But acclimating someone to your culture and to everything that comes with being a citizen is a long-term uh, plan. And I See, don't think, I think that mass immigration is 
a sustainable way to do that. Ultimately. I think that's a big part of the problem. What you just hit on is, you know, in the U.S., we had a lot of immigration in the 20th century. We've had that repeatedly. But the immigrants who came in the 20th century, in the early 20th century, in the 1920s, whenever all of that Ellis Island type of stuff, they wanted to assimilate. They wanted to become American. You know, I've talked about this before, like, my grandparents, my great grandparents, they wanted to be American. They wanted their kids to be American. They pushed English on them. You know, my grandparents both changed, my Italian grandparents changed their names to be more American sounding. Mm -hmm. My grandmother went from Anna to Anne. She was like, I'm just Anne now. Okay. You know, She's but like, they we wanted made it that. to America. But now we have this thing where we tell everybody that American culture is trash and they shouldn't want to be part of it mm -hmm. and they should bring their own culture and maintain that. And it's like, once we've given up our own culture and said that it's garbage, why would we expect anyone else to yeah. want to be part of it? Well, Denver just, uh, I was just reading this report today that Denver is uh, trying to make it so they're encouraging students like who have immigrated here to continue to speak their own language and not to learn English. This is wow. That's so dumb. <laughs> yep. That's so, just so stupid. <laughs> I, got, I, I was hanging out with uh, family for the holidays and my girlfriend's very based grandmother. We, we were looking at photos of, you know, her, her parents came from Italy and she's 90. This is crazy, crazy. It's, a, it's amazing to see these old photos and hear these stories. And she said that her parents never taught her Italian. And so she comes, their parents come here, she's born here. And she said, I wish they did teach me Italian, but they said, we're, we're in America, we will speak English. And she said they spoke broken English, but they tried their hardest to learn the language and work in the communities and make a good life. And that's what they did. Now they have a bunch of great kids and a big, big family, and uh, it's it's crazy to see the, the expansion of the family tree. Mm -hmm. But I th I feel like, especially for uh, you know the, the the elements of my family that were immigrants, same thing. Come to America, learn the language, fit in, try your best. Even when back then it's hard for you know my family because of the laws around miscegenation, mixed race families are not allowed and stuff like that. For white Europeans, it's a bit easier, but even still, the attempt was we have to do our best to fit in. Yep. We have to be a part of this as a success. And we're investing in this experiment, right? We want to be a part of growing this nation. And our, our way of contributing to that is to be a part of the culture and actively have our children participate and carry that forward. And that's not the way it works now. And that's the, the, the strange thing. We'll get progressives saying, no, we should let immigrant enclaves live this way and, and maintain their culture because we're allowing American culture to die out. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.